Let's talk about a super important topic in a really simple way, as if we were having a conversation. Imagine you really want to have a lot of money to buy cool things and live well. But, do you know what's more important than having money? Knowing how to use and take care of that money. Think about it. Many people want to get rich but don't worry about learning how to use money properly. It's like wanting to play a game without learning the rules. They end up spending everything and never get what they really want. That's why it's very important to learn about money, how to save, invest, and make money grow. This is called financial education. Now, if you're curious about how to learn this, I'll tell you a secret. There's a very cool way to learn called the 70-20-10 methodology. This is a way to divide your study time to learn more efficiently. And let's see how you can use this methodology to become an expert in finances and improve your financial life. Want to know how? Let me tell you about a super cool and smart way to learn called the 70-20-10 methodology. Imagine you have to learn something new, like playing an instrument, speaking a new language, or understanding money. The 70-20-10 methodology will help you learn this in a much more efficient and fun way. So, how does it work? It's like dividing your learning time into three parts. First part, 70% of your time should be spent practicing. Yes, that's right, practicing. For example, if you want to learn to ride a bike, the best way is to get on the bike and start pedaling. The same goes for anything else you want to learn. Practice is the biggest part of learning. Second part, 20% of your time should be spent learning from others. This could be with a mentor, someone who already knows a lot about what you want to learn, or with friends and family who have experience. They will give you tips, show tricks, and help you avoid mistakes. Learning from others is very important. Third part, 10% of your time should be used for traditional study, like reading books, watching videos, or taking courses. While this part is smaller, it's still essential to give you the theoretical foundation of what you're learning. Now, let me give you a simple example to understand better. When someone wants to learn a new language, the first thing many think about is enrolling in a language school and spending years studying. But often, these people can't speak the language fluently. Why? Because just studying isn't enough. They need to practice speaking with others, watching movies, listening to music, and so on. On the other hand, a child learns to speak just by listening and interacting with their family, without touching a book. This shows that practice and interaction with others are super important in the learning process. So, to sum up, the 70-20-10 methodology says you should spend 70% of your time practicing, 20% of your time learning from others, 10% of your time studying traditionally. Now, let's look at 10 steps on how you can apply this powerful learning methodology to educate yourself in the fascinating world of finances and make the most of your money, improving your financial situation. First step. Dedicate 70% of your time to active practice. Imagine you want to learn to speak a new language. Sure, you can study grammar and read books, but do you know how you'll really get good? By practicing. This means talking with people who already speak the language, watching movies, and listening to music in that language. That's how you really learn to communicate. The same applies to financial education. If you want to know how to take better care of your money, you need to start practicing. This means, track all your expenses, even the small ones. Create a budget, separating what you earn and what you spend. See where you can save, like spending less on unnecessary things. Try investing a bit of your money to make it grow. Practicing these things every day will help you understand better how money works and how you can control it. For example, if you want to learn about economics, it's not enough to just read about it. You need to make your own budget, organize your income and expenses, and see how you can improve. At first, it might seem complicated, but over time, you'll get better and more confident. Second step. Dedicate 20% of your time to learning from others. This is super important. Think about people who have achieved financial success with their businesses. Many of them had help from mentors or smart and experienced people around them. They learned a lot by listening to advice and seeing examples from these people. Imagine you want to be a great soccer player. Sure, you need to train a lot, remember the 70%. But it's also essential to listen to the advice of coaches, watch games of experienced players, and learn from them. This will help you improve much faster. The same goes for money. Find someone who already knows a lot about finances, 
someone who can give you valuable tips and show you the right way. It could be a mentor, a teacher, or even a friend or relative who understands the subject. Ask them how they save, invest, and manage money. Listen to their stories, learn from their mistakes and successes. Additionally, participating in discussion groups, workshops, or online communities where people share their financial experiences can be very useful. Learning from others is a powerful way to avoid common mistakes and discover new strategies. So remember, 20% of your time should be dedicated to learning from others. This will give you a broader perspective and help you improve more quickly and efficiently. Third step, dedicate 10% of your time to reading and studying books. This is what we call traditional education. Many people start their financial journey very excited, reading several books, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, and taking personal finance courses. This is great and an important part of learning, but it's only a small part. Imagine you want to learn to swim. You can read all the books about swimming, watch all the videos, and even take courses, but just that won't make you a good swimmer. You need to jump into the pool and start swimming. It's practice and experience that really teach you. With finances, it's the same thing. Reading and studying is important to understand concepts and learn new strategies, but you won't see financial results just by doing that. You need to apply what you've learned in practice and learn from your own experiences. No book, podcast, or course will make you a millionaire on its own. They are tools to give you basic knowledge and inspire you, but real learning comes from practice and experience. So remember to dedicate 10% of your time to this traditional education. It will give you the theoretical foundation needed to understand the world of finance and prepare you to apply that knowledge in practice. Fourth step, apply your learning to real situations. Now that you've read, studied, and learned from others, it's time to take action and put all that knowledge into practice. Think of it this way. Nothing is built without laying the first brick, and no one wins a marathon without taking the first step. Imagine you want to learn to cook. You've read recipes, watched videos, and listened to tips from experienced chefs. But now you need to go to the kitchen and start cooking for real. You'll make mistakes, maybe burn something or get the salt amount wrong, but that's how you learn and improve. With your finances, it's the same thing. Start implementing everything you've learned in your daily life. Here are some ideas to get started. Create a budget, track your income and expenses, see where you can cut costs, and plan how to spend your money. Save, put into practice the saving tips you've learned. It could be something simple like bringing a snack from home instead of buying it on the street. Invest, if you've learned about investments, start slowly. It could be a small amount, but the important thing is to start. Track your progress. See how you're doing, adjust your plan as needed, and keep learning from your experience. The most important thing is to start. Don't wait until you know everything because you'll never know everything. Start now with what you know and keep learning and adjusting along the way. Practice will teach you much more than any book or course. Fifth step, practice financial decision making. Often, people don't start their projects or improve their finances due to lack of discipline, not lack of knowledge. They keep delaying, without deciding what they really want to achieve. Imagine you want to be a basketball player, but you never decide to train or join a team. You know what you need to do, but you don't make the necessary decisions to start. The same happens with finances. To achieve financial success, it's essential to take action and be responsible for your choices. Here are some tips for practicing financial decision-making. Set clear goals. Decide what you want to achieve. It could be saving a certain amount of money, paying off debt, or investing for the future. Create an action plan. After setting your goals, plan how you'll achieve them. What steps do you need to take? What will be your first step? Make daily decisions. Every day, make small decisions that bring you closer to your goals. It could be deciding not to buy something unnecessary or choosing to invest a bit of your money. Maintain discipline. Be consistent with your decisions. It's discipline that will lead you to success, not just knowing what to do. Taking action and being disciplined with your decisions will help you achieve your financial goals. Remember, knowledge alone isn't enough. You need to act on what you've learned and be persistent. Sixth step, reflect on your financial progress. This is an essential step that many people forget. Reflecting on what you've learned and how you've applied it will help you understand what's working and what needs to be improved. Imagine you're practicing a sport and you never watch your games or check your performance. 
you wouldn't know if you're improving or if there are things you need to work on. The same applies to finances. Here's how to reflect on your progress. Regularly review your budget. Check if you're sticking to your plan or if there are areas where you need to adjust. Evaluate your savings and investments. See if they are growing as you expected. Are you making the right choices? Learn from your mistakes. If something didn't go as planned, analyze why and what you can do differently next time. Celebrate your successes. Recognize and celebrate your achievements, no matter how small they may seem. This will keep you motivated. Reflecting on your progress will give you a clearer view of your financial situation and help you make better decisions in the future. Seventh step, adjust your strategies based on what you learned. After reflecting, it's time to make adjustments. You may find that some things are working well, while others need improvement. Imagine you're learning to ride a bike. At first, you may fall a lot and need to adjust your balance. But as you learn and practice, you find what works best for you. With finances, it's similar. Based on your reflection, adjust your strategies. Change your budget if needed. If you find that some expenses are higher than you expected, adjust your budget accordingly. Re-evaluate your investments. If some investments aren't performing as you hoped, consider changing your approach. Improve your savings plan. If you're not saving as much as you wanted, find new ways to save more. Making adjustments based on your experiences and reflections will help you stay on track and improve your financial situation. Eighth step, keep learning and growing. Financial education is a continuous journey. Even when you achieve your goals, there's always more to learn. Imagine you're a great soccer player, but you continue to practice and learn new techniques. That's how you keep improving and staying ahead. With finances, it's the same. Stay updated, follow financial news, read new books, and keep learning about new strategies. Join financial communities, participate in forums or groups where people discuss financial topics. Keep practicing, continue applying what you've learned and improving your financial skills. By keeping up with new information and continuously learning, you'll stay informed and be able to make better financial decisions. Ninth step, share your knowledge with others. Teaching others what you've learned is a great way to reinforce your own knowledge and help others improve their financial situation. Imagine you've become an expert in cooking. Sharing your recipes and tips with friends and family will not only help them but also strengthen your own skills. In finances, it's the same. Share your experiences. Talk about what you've learned and how you've managed your money. Help others with their finances. Offer advice and support to friends and family who need help. Join financial workshops or seminars. Share your knowledge and learn from others who are also interested in finances. Teaching others will help you understand better and keep you motivated to keep improving. Tenth and final step, learn from your mistakes. This is an essential aspect because we all make mistakes, and instead of seeing them as failures, we should view them as learning opportunities. Imagine you're learning to ride a bike. You might fall a few times before mastering the technique, but each fall is a chance to adjust your form and improve your balance. With your finances, the principle is the same. Here are some tips for learning from your financial mistakes. Analyze your mistakes. When something doesn't go as planned, stop and think about what went wrong. Was it a rash financial decision? An investment that didn't work out? Identify the causes and what could have been done differently. Learn from the experience. Use what you've learned from your mistakes to make better decisions in the future. If an investment didn't work out, study what went wrong and how you can avoid similar mistakes. Balance your life. While pursuing financial success, remember that money isn't everything. Don't sacrifice your health, time with family, or well-being for work. True wealth includes quality of life, health, and time with those you love. Reevaluate your priorities. Sometimes, focusing solely on money can lead to an unbalanced life. Evaluate what's most important to you. Pursuing wealth shouldn't mean losing your peace of mind, health, or relationships. Celebrate your achievements and learnings. Recognize your successes and also the lessons that come from mistakes. This will help you stay motivated and keep improving. Remember, wealth isn't just about money. It includes your time freedom, physical and mental health, and the ability to enjoy life with those you love. By learning from your mistakes and maintaining balance, you can achieve a fuller and more rewarding life. Imagine you're building an awesome house with building blocks. To make the house amazing, you need to use three different types of blocks. 70% of the blocks are used to create the foundation and walls of the house. 
This is like learning by doing, putting things into practice. If you're learning about money, for example, it's important to practice and make things happen for real. 20% of the blocks are used for details and decorations. This is like learning from others, getting advice from friends or mentors who already know a lot about what you're trying to learn. 10% of the blocks are for the finishing touches, like windows and doors. This is like reading books and taking courses about what you're learning. It's important, but it's just a part of the process. So, instead of just reading books and taking courses about money, remember to also learn from people who already know about it and, more importantly, to put everything into practice. Start learning and managing your money as soon as possible, and over time, you'll discover more ways to make your money work for you. If you have ideas on how to learn better or if you want to watch some videos that might help, share with us. Thank you for taking the time for this, and see you next time.